So um, the question is, why do we integrate uh, HIV or CVDs into HIV programs? And uh, the previous speakers have discussed the burden of CVDs and also the importance of HIV, especially for us in um, low- and middle-income countries. And it's also been uh, uh, shown that um, patients who have HIV are more likely uh, have an increased risk of cardiovascular diseases. So trying to bring the two diseases together in the program setting really is not a choice, but a necessity. And um, <laughs> the question is, how do we leverage the HIV infrastructure to be able to deliver uh, CVD services? Um, this uh, discussion will look at uh, our programs in Kenya, Nigeria, and Zambia. Nigeria and Zambia actually represent our biggest HIV programs in the world. And uh, together, we probably have about 500,000 people on treatment. And the first uh, pilot on the CVD HIV integration actually took place in Kenya. And when you look at, again, all the three countries, Kenya, Zambia, and then Nigeria, the hypertension prevalence is quite high. And um, if you're into HIV AIDS programming, I mean, in the early days, People come to the clinic, we are all looking out for TB, we are looking out for oral thrush, we are looking out for pneumocystis, UVC, pneumonia. But more recently, you hardly see these clinical conditions anymore. Because one, yes, uh, people are being diagnosed much earlier than a decade ago. Uh, patients are on ART. And more often than not, when a, a patient misses a clinic appointment and then you go into us, what happened to this patient? Well, they will tell you he suffered from a stroke. And this kind of stories are not uncommon in our HIV clinics. So for us, from the program side, you work so hard and, uh, and your patient dies of other causes, then it means that you really need to start looking at how best to make sure that uh, you protect the gains that you have made in, uh, in delivering HIV care. So in Kenya, um, this program was in partnership with the Ministry of Health, the Kenya Cardiac Society, and the United States Agency for International Development. Um, in this program, a CVD screening treatment and referral was provided um, in five facilities in the Rift Valley in Kenya. And the, uh, the population was actually segmented. The first, the HIV testing and counseling clients. Here you have both HIV positive and negative people coming in. And then, of course, those who are into care, pre-ART, and then finally those on treatment. And um, this program took place uh, a couple of years ago, and then it's over 4,000 HIV patients. And the healthcare providers were actually trained to, you know, provide the additional CVD and then diabetes services. The truth is that, I mean, within the normal healthcare setting, you expect providers to uh, take blood pressure of their patients, take their weights, but with the load, the client load, most of these things uh, are not usually practiced. Now, in terms of the findings, the behavioral risk factors were highest among HIV negative um, uh, p uh, patients within the uh, counseling and testing setting. And this includes uh, uh, tobacco use, increased uh, uh, lack of physical activity, and then alcohol use. And then for those who were uh, HIV positive, elevated blood pressure, uh, high uh, uh, BMI, and then high waist circumference were found. Now, I, I must state that um, um, Within the community, I mean, these HIV patients basically are mirroring what you find. Because if you have high blood pressure in the general population, then, I mean, it therefore makes sense that you are likely to find that within your HIV population. And this, again, shows some more data where you can see that um, the, uh, the percentage of people with high blood pressure increases with the length on ART. Same for... Um, um, the width circumference, and then also uh, total cholesterol. Now to Nigeria. 
Nigeria, the par a lot was conducted in the northern town of Kano in a facility called Mutala Mohammed uh, Specialist Hospital. Here we used the WHO and the International Society of Hypertension guidelines for the CBD risk assessment. So we had both modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors. Um, the non-modifiable include age, male sex, and then uh, the modifiable smoking, hypertension, and then diabetes. And then those who had high risk were referred for further laboratory investigations. In this pilot, we screened over a thousand HIV positive patients, and this focused on only in the ART clinic. And um, about 25% of our patients were aged more than 40 years. A quarter were male. In most of HIV clinics that you find in Africa, most of your patients tend to be uh, females. And, and then we had about 21.8% being uh, uh, overweight or obese, and then the high blood pressure in about 15% of them. And we also found out that um, the, there was a linear relationship between the uh, cholesterol level and the duration on ART. So based on this pilot, currently in, a, in our Nigerian program, we have integrated uh, CVD screening within our counseling and testing services, as well as within the community. Um, the tools that were used have actually been simplified and is being used by HIV support groups. Um, we, have, we provide them with uh, height measures, uh, digital BP machines, and then also the BMI chart so that they are able to work it out themselves. So they normally do this screening during their monthly support group meetings. The last example of integration work that we did um, is in Zambia, and it's also currently continuing. Now, in Zambia, FHI works in the northern provinces, so from the central province up Copper Belt to northern Luapula and the other places. And in the Zambian program, we have the chronic checklist um, screens for hypertension, diabetes, but in addition to that, we also look at TB, gender-based violence. And this is implemented in uh, almost all the facilities that are supported. And depending on the capacity of the facility, um, uh, they perform a random blood sugar. And this is uh, just to show you the chronic checklist that is used. And this is similar to what is used in Nigeria as well. So in the uh, Zambian program, in the counseling and testing setting, we screened about 13,000 and about uh, 5,000 were referred for random blood sugar. In the treatment clinic, ART clinic, 18,000 were screened, and then uh, about 2,500 were referred. And uh, in terms of the abnormally high blood sugar, in the counseling and testing that we found about 5.3%, and then ART, 5.5. Now, what have we learned from this integration? At least one thing that we can say with all the confidence that we have is that you can really integrate CVD and uh, uh, HIV in the program setting, especially for large programs. And uh, you can do it regardless of the uh, level of uh, service that the provider is in a primary healthcare setting or in tertiary facilities. And you can also do this integration within the community as we have uh, uh, in Nigeria. Now, Leveraging the existing HIV program offers huge opportunities. For example, if you look at uh, the uh, program I currently manage, we on the average test about 2 million people for HIV. So just think about it, taking this platform and then providing enhanced service screening for CVD. And uh, yes, we do leverage the infrastructure, we do leverage the staff, but an important thing that we need to recognize is that you can leverage the staff up to a certain point because uh, these are staff who are overworked and underpaid. So they see some of these integration activities as additional and uh, sometimes they are a bit resistant. But um, one of the things they all recognize is that they, 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 um, their HIV service is actually uh, enhanced. Now, uh, integration also strengthens the capacity of the health system to address the comprehensive needs of HIV. 
like I said, in the early days, people really look out for uh, infectious diseases among HIV patients. But increasingly, it became, it's becoming clear that um, CVD is an important cause of morbidity and mortality among HIV patients. So, I mean, healthcare workers are becoming acutely aware, and they are doing something about it. And um, for us, particularly in Nigeria, where access to HIV services is uh, low compared to other African countries, there is a massive uh, movement towards increasing uh, access to services. And uh, like uh, in my program, in the last six to nine months, we've um, activated about uh, 2,000 new sites. And you can imagine all these new health facilities that have been activated to provide HIV services being used to provide CVD services. This is a huge opportunity for, for, for everybody. And also uh, stigma. If, if, if somebody walks into a counseling and testing room, and within that counseling and testing session is able to get uh, screening for diabetes, screening for hypertension, screening for TB, ask a few questions about malaria, then, I mean, we are able to create that kind of de stigmatizing environment for our counseling and testing rooms, and it goes a long way to make our programs very successful. Thank you very much. I hope I did it within 15 minutes. <laughs>